Welcome back to another quick edit here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to do is take a look at the vintage and the antique filters to get that old, dated, grainy film look to your image. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so as you can see, I already have the vintage filter and the antique filter added to the photo. I'll show you that I have not made any edits to the develop module. I haven't done anything. I left this on on one standard. You can come in and change your camera profile, make your edits here if you wish. I just want to show you what each of these filters does on an image that has no edits done to it. So this is straight out of the camera, the raw image, as you can see. All right. So we'll start with the antique filter because I think this is the one that gives the most pleasing look. When you open up the antique filter, it defaults to the color palette of Moscow. Now, you cannot add additional color palettes to this particular image, or I'm sorry, this particular filter. You just have to use the colors that are offered here. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you how to make your own version of a faded antique look that you'll have complete control over the color and everything else. All right. Now, the antique filter allows you to adjust the brightness, and that is pretty cool. So on this image, I'll probably brighten it up. It was already pretty dark. And then I can even fade it. Now, you can use the curves to do a fade, but this gives you a really nice option of fading your image just a little bit inside of the antique filter. And then you can saturate. I can add more color or I can remove color from the image uh, all right here inside of this filter. So this is really nice. And then, of course, there is the film grain. Now, the challenge with this one is you do not get to choose your film type. If that's not a problem for you, then you go ahead and keep rolling with this one. But you also don't get to see much of the grain, right? So I'm just going to pull the amount all the way down. And you can see that's without the grain. And then I'll pull it all the way up. And that's with the grain. Now, that's nice. You know, it's nice that it's subtle. But if you wanted to actually see the grain in your image, then this probably is not going to be the way that you go to add your grain. Um, you can always add an additional film grain filter on top of this and then choose something with a higher ISO, like maybe this 3200. And you can see that I'm adding in a lot of grain to my image overall. If I turn this off and on, you can really see it without even having to zoom in. That is essentially what you have when you use the antique filter. Now, you can always change to one of these presets, and there's only a few presets available. Now, if you come up with one and you're like, you know what, I really like uh, Yalta when I started the video, and we'll just pull this down and... Maybe I want to brighten it, right? So if I really like that one, then I can just hit more, save new style, and I'll just call this FWP Antique 1. If I know that I'm going to be using this on a regular basis, I can always just add the filter, the antique filter, click the more option, and then select the FWP Antique 1. Now, that's going to hold true with pretty much all of the filters. You can create a style or save the style that you've already created uh, if you find that that works the best. All right. So now we're going to turn off the antique filter and move over to the vintage filter. Now, the vintage filter is a little bit different. It has a lot of the same tools, except for you don't have the fade option. All right. You get to choose a color, and the colors here are a little bit more uh, aggressive, where the antique filter is a little bit more subtle in its approach and, in my opinion, more tasteful. Uh, the vintage filter is really overboard with some of its um, adjustments. Now, you know, you can get some really cool looks, especially if you're going for like that psychedelic look. Uh, but 
I don't know if that is, you know, what everyone wants to go with. Uh, the whenever I use the vintage filter, the warm, uh, the warm color here is what I typically gravitate towards. And then I may even pull the amount of it down. And you can see that that adds in a nice look overall. But truthfully, you only have two sliders here. So this one is very simple. And I can adjust my saturation uh, of the filter overall of how that's impacting the colors in my image. But then I can also add in film grain. And if I put that all the way up and I bring the size all the way up, I'm still faced with the same issue that I ran into with the antique filter that the film grain, if you like, if I had shown this to you uh, a before, you, you would probably be like, yeah, I don't see it. And the truth is, it's hard to tell that it's there. Now, um, if you can't see it in the computer, it probably won't print that way as well. So I do have a solution for you, but I wanted to show you the quick ways of editing the vintage uh, or making that, that film grain look. All right. So let's go ahead and... We'll just click on my snapshot here where I have the full edit of what I did. Now, this one, we will have to go back to the develop module because I did create a few things. So uh, before you go to the effects module, you're going to want to add the camera profile of on one neutral if you're working on a raw image. Now, if you're not, then you're not going to have the camera profile, so you could just jump down here to contrast. You want to remove some contrast. Your image is going to be different than mine. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're getting a flat look image. That's essentially what all of these adjustments make, which is the structure. I pulled that down because old photos, they weren't very sharp, and that's okay. And then, of course, the saturation, I pulled that down because the color of an image that if you're trying to make it look old, you got to take some of that color out because not many old images were actually captured with a lot of saturation. Uh, that's just the way it works, right? Now, coming over to the effects module, once you've made your base, like you prepared your canvas for the edit, when you come over to the effects module, the first thing that I recommend you throw in there is a split tone. And the split tone, if I turn this and turn all of these off real quick, so that way you can see what's happening with the split tone. So if I turn this off and on, this is what it looks like coming in to the basic effects panel, all right, after you made your develop module updates. If I turn the split tone on, you see it starts to add that color tint in. Uh, similar to what happened with the antique and the vintage filter, the difference here is I have complete control over how I add the colors into my image as opposed to allowing the filter to decide it. So this is a little bit more of an advanced method of, you know, making the adjustment, but I think that it's worthwhile of having this opportunity to edit your highlights and your shadows and then choosing how they blend with the image, right? How much of that color is being added into your highlights, how much of it is going into your shadows, and then how to blend that. Uh, and how, much you, how much of the color do you want to shine through? I'm leaning heavily towards the shadows because if you go to the left, like, so the center is right here at 50, and I pulled it to the left, so that's putting more orange into the shadows. And then if I pull it over to the right, that's putting more of the yellow gold into the highlights. And it's, you know, leaning the, the balance of the image towards that direction. But I want it more of the shadow uh, look. And I'm just going to pull that back down. Came all the way down to 10. Now, you can choose whatever color scheme you want. But that's the reason why I go with this. Now... By default, the mode is set to color. You can play around with these and select the one that fits your style. Like darken is pretty cool. Uh, multiply, 
maybe that works for your image. And then, of course, there's classic, which, you know, looks nice. But I was okay with color. I like to just affect the colors when uh, I use the split tone. So that's what I left it at. And now the next one was the curves filter. So if you remember correctly, on the antique filter, you had the fade option. Um, now, I've done videos on this already. I use the curve to add a fade to the image. So with it, or I'm sorry, without it, you know, it's kind of uh, contrasty and there's darker blacks and brighter whites. So all I did was I pulled down on the whites just a little bit and I pulled up on the black side over here just a little bit and that faded the image. That's all I did with this. You could go a little bit more crazy if you want to, but you have complete control. If you go back to watching my curves video, uh, you, you know that you have complete control now over your tone. Um, I do recommend that you stay with just editing tone using the curve on this one because you're already using the color, uh, the split tone down here to modify the colors in your image. If you start going into these channels, you might end up with something a little weird. So don't recommend you go into the channels. The next thing, because I didn't want to make the image like way too unstructured, if you will, like removing some of the sharpen, I decided to add a blur filter at a very, very low opacity and amount. Now, Gaussian blur is probably my favorite type of blur, uh, so that's why I used it. But you could use probably any of these blurs with the exception of motion and radial, but you could probably use surface and box. I don't think that that's going to impact the image uh, drastically. But the point that I do want to make is use a low opacity and then just blend that in until the image starts to look just a little soft, right? Because these old lens, the way that I, I, I think of it is they weren't as sharp as the lens that we have today. So it's important that, you know, we just take away a little bit of that, that edge of over the entire image and, you know, make it a little soft focused, if you will. And then of course, we have to add in our film grain. Now, this is where you're going to gain probably some of the, 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 the most control over your edit for this particular style of image. And the reason for that is you get to choose your film type. If you're not familiar with this, don't worry about it. Don't overthink it. It's super simple. The film uh, company, if you will, that on one is trying to emulate is listed over to the left. I wouldn't worry about that so much unless you're like uh, old school into film. And let me know in the comment section if you shot film and you know like exactly the film look that you love. And if on one does a good job at emulating these because I'm not 100% sure. I didn't get into photography uh, that early, so I don't know. However, what you can do is look at these numbers on the far right. These are the ISO sensitivities. So the way that film used to work is since you couldn't set the ISO in the camera like we do now, you had to purchase film that was sensitive to light equivalent to what our ISO is now. So uh, if it was if you knew that you were going to be shooting in dark places, you probably went and grabbed one of these higher ISO films, uh, which it exposed a little bit brighter, but at the same time, you ended up with a little bit more grain, okay? Now, if you knew that you were going to be shooting in well-lit places or you uh, didn't have to worry about over underexposed images probably, then you would go with a film type of 100 or 400. Same concept that we use with digital cameras today, the moral of the story is you choose based off of the higher number if you want more grain or like more noticeable grain. And then if you want less noticeable grain, you go with one of these lower speed film types. All right. Now, if I got that wrong, please correct me in the comment section. I will never claim to be an expert, but that is my very uh, basic understanding of the film types and 
how you would select a film back in the day when you were shooting film. Now, with that being said, since I have control over the aggression of my ISO, I can choose the amount here and really dial in how much grain shows up in my image. So what I tend to do is I go for the highest number, which is the, uh, I think this is pronounced Ilford Delta 3200. Um, I could be wrong. But what I do is I select that one, and then I just move my amount slider until I get the amount that I want in the image. And I always use this one. This is just a personal preference. Uh, I don't really gravitate towards any of the other ones. So like for this image, probably about here is where I want that grain to be. And then I just adjust the size, right? Do I want it to be like super huge like this? And this almost looks like a newspaper shot to me. Uh, and then, or do I want it to be a little less like it, you know, or a little smaller? Um, th this is completely to your taste, but I just wanted to show you that you have more flexibility doing it this way. And this is just a way of adding the film grain filters or making that film grainy look uh, to your image. This is just a way. You can use a ton of filters. If I wanted to, I could come over to textures and I can add in a texture. Uh, I can even throw in some grunge. You could throw a glow on there. Um, I can do bleach bypass or even a cross process. There's a ton of options available to really altering your photo and making it look old and film film like. Uh, but this is what I would offer to you as a starting point. If you found value in today's video, smash the like button. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. My name is Chris. I create content centered around Almond Photo Raw very, very consistently. So if that's something you want to see, smash the subscribe button. Don't forget to check the bell icon. Click the video on the left to watch the playlist of all of the previous quick edits and click the video on the right to see what YouTube thinks is right for you. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.